With the release of Photo Raw 2026, we received some new masking tools, and one of those is Intersecting Mask. Now, a lot of people have been asking me because they're confused as to what the heck this is, how it works, and why they should even care about it. Now, I can't answer the last question, but I can tell you what it is, and I can show you how it works, and that's what we're going to do today. So by the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of what the Intersect Mask is. If you'd like to follow along, consider downloading the file in the description box below. I will note you have to have Photo Raw 2026 because Intersect Mask only lives inside of that software, or at least that version of On One. If you want to pick it up and save some money, consider using Freewell 10 between now and the end of November. It will stack on top of the discounted price that On One is selling it for. I do make a small commission, but it's at no extra cost to you. Now, let's go ahead and get oriented with our image here today. If I click on effects, you'll notice that I have a black and white filter as well as a color mixer. Now, the color mixer is just to darken the sky to show you the clear silhouette of the building. And then that's just going to help us see the effect applied a little bit later. So I'm going to click on local and we're going to apply a mask to this image. I'm demonstrating it in local today, primarily because the masking tools are a little bit easier to follow along with the logic of masking. All right. Now, remember, a mask inside of on one is just instructions telling on one what to apply an adjustment to and what not to apply an adjustment to. I'm going to click the plus icon and come down to gradient. And then I'm going to click add because I want to add a gradient adjustment. Now, nothing has actually happened to the image yet because I haven't made an adjustment. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this down to a negative 1.85 exposure. That's really irrelevant so far. We haven't done anything extra than what you will probably be familiar with. Now, what I am gonna do is come up to the top here and where it says shape, I'm going to change this over to center and I'm only doing this for demonstration purposes to show you what's happening with intersect, all right? So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and I'm gonna make it a little bit more of a round shape and then I'm just gonna pull it over to the side and maybe even make it a little bit larger. All right, so now I have a circle and it is feathered here like so. And let me just make it even darker. All right, so now the sky is really, really dark between this top section and I'll even go all the way negative. So that way we can really tell. All right, now what I need to do is come up to my mask layers and I need to apply a second mask. Now, when you apply a second mask, you hit the plus icon. And remember, the mask layers are just individual masks that combine to make the final output up here. So what I'm going to do is come back to gradient and I'm going to add another gradient. I'm going to change this over to center. Again, I'm only doing this for demonstration purposes. And then I'm going to make this one like a really narrow narrow oval and then just rotate that around horizontally and pull it off to the side and then i'm just going to drag this all the way across like so all right so now you're probably like chris what the heck did you just do well what i did was i applied two different masks and they're both using the negative exposure that is what you would normally see and that's pretty straightforward. But what I'm gonna do is come to the top gradient, this little narrow oval looking one, click the three line menu on that mask, and then hover over mode. And you'll notice that we have intersect right below subtract. I'm just gonna go ahead and click that. And I want you to watch what happens to the mask when I do this. I now only get the adjustment of the negative exposure in the area where the two masks overlap. So if I press the letter O to show you in the grayscale, you can see 
that if I turn off this top layer that's using the intersect mode, I get the big circle back. And if I turn it back on, well, now it's only showing me where those two masks overlap with each other. Now, what I could do is I could drag this around and you can see how I can really start to shape where I'm selecting or where I'm telling on one to apply this negative exposure adjustment. So if I press the letter O so we can see it in real time over our image, as I drag this up and down, you can see how it's just applying the negative exposure right here in the corner of this particular oval. And then of course, if I expand this, now I'm adding more into that area. Now, you're probably like, all right, that's cool. Cool party trick, Chris, but how do I actually use this in a workflow in a way that makes sense? Well, let's go ahead and reset this mask. So I'm gonna come up to the top, click the three line menu, and I'm gonna click reset. That gets rid of all of my mask layers, but I still have my adjustment here. Now, to make this a little bit more visible, I'm going to click on effects, and I'm gonna turn off this color mixer, and that's just gonna brighten up the sky in the background there. Then I'm gonna come back over to local, and I'm going to hit the plus icon, and I'm gonna use a quick mask AI brush to select the entire building, all right? The reason I wanna select the entire building is because it's gonna give me kinda of like a coloring space, if you will. So I'm going to select the entire building by clicking it, and then I'm gonna hit the blue check mark, let on one think itself out. All right, that looks great. Well, I don't actually want a negative exposure over the entire building. I only want it over this left side, but I definitely don't want a negative exposure over the sky. And this is where intersecting masks really come in handy. So I'm gonna hit the plus icon on the mask layer for the adjustment that I have by hitting the plus icon. And then I'm gonna come down to gradient and then I'm going to click add. It doesn't really matter which one you click here because you're going to change the blend mode or the uh, mask mode, I should say, by coming back to the gradient, hitting the three line menu and then clicking mode or hovering over mode and then clicking intersect. And look at that. Now I have contained my negative exposure at the current moment, it's at the bottom of my mask and I could rotate this around. So if I want the negative exposure to happen on the left side and then gradually get brighter towards the right, then I can do that. And just think about how you can start crafting light in your images using a gradient on specific subjects like in this case, this bell tower. If I pull down this transition line, I can get a pretty stark transition just like so. And look at how easily I was able to make part of the building dark and the other part bright. Now, of course, if I come back over to effects and I turn on my darkening effect, this is what I would probably want to do for, you know, a little bit of a fine art look. All right. Now, I'm going to turn this off again, and I want to show you this in the red overlay so that way you can see what it looks like, or the color overlay, I should say. So I'm going to click on mode, and then click color overlay. And you can see exactly what's happening with this mask and what Intersect is doing. It's taking the quick mask AI selection of the entire building, and then it's applying a gradient only in the space where the quick mask AI selected the building. It's not going all the way over the image. Now, if I turn off intersect mask, you can see I am putting, or the intersecting gradient, I should say, if I turn that off, I'm putting the entire gradient mask, or I'm sorry, the entire negative exposure, come back over to local, put in the entire negative exposure over the entire building. But if I only want it in that one section, then I turn on the gradient and it puts the negative exposure only on the left side of the building. And I can non-destructively move this around and do all kinds of stuff of whatever 
I think makes the most sense. This is a very creative way of crafting the light in your images. And before Photo Raw 2026, doing stuff like this was very, very difficult. I was able to do it, but it was more difficult. This is so much easier and it is much appreciated. Now, the question is, will you ever need to use this in your own workflow? I think the answer is yes, if you are a more advanced user of On One Photo Raw. But the answer is probably no, if you're not doing really detailed work to craft the light. Maybe you'll need it if you need to correct some exposure issues in the initial image. But beyond that, I don't believe that you need it. I could be wrong. You let me know in the comment section below. For those of you who are like, well, Chris, thanks for showing us how to do it in local, but how do I do this in effects? Here's my recommendation. You don't. Instead, you build all of your, I guess, your intersecting masks inside of the local adjustment. Just use a negative exposure and then you can turn that off after you're done creating it. So I'll just press the letter O. And then what you want to do is come up to the targeted adjustment or the target mask, I should say. Click the three line menu and hit copy. You could also do this by right clicking the mask thumbnail and hit copy. And then just turn off that adjustment and then you can come over to effects. And let's say I wanna apply a color filter over this. So I'll hit add filter, click on photo filter, and I want to apply my mask. So I'm just going to either right click the thumbnail inside of the photo filter. This is my preference, always click it and then right click it and then hit paste. And now I've applied that mask here inside of the effect section. Now, the reason I recommend it this way is because I think the local adjustments has the more logical approach to masking and applying the new masking tools. So it's easier to create it there and then copy and paste it into effects and you'll still get the same result without any of the hassle. So hopefully you found today's content valuable. If you did, smash the like button. If you want to pick up All One Photo Raw and save a little bit of money, again, consider using coupon code FREEWILL10. It'll save you some money on top of the discounted price at checkout. But that coupon code is only good until November 30th, 2025. I do make a small commission from everyone who uses it, but it's at no extra charge to you. It's a win-win for everyone involved. Now, if you really want to go deeper in learning how to use All One Photo Raw, consider signing up for a training call with me. A link for that can be found in the description box below. And until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.